Elite Facts presents 8 Interesting Facts About Mayan Civilization 8. Continuing Culture Although the Mayan civilization has taken a massive decline since their society has been conquered, in many rural parts of Mexico and Guatemala, the Mayan language and culture is still present, showing that the culture, although no longer massive, is still alive and well to this day. In fact, there are over 7 million Mayans living in their home regions, many of whom have managed to maintain substantial remnants of their ancient cultural heritage. Some of these people are quite integrated into the modern cultures of the nations in which they reside, while others continue to live a more traditional, culturally distinct life, often speaking one of the Mayan languages as a primary language. The largest populations of contemporary Maya inhabit the Mexican states of Yucatan, Campeche, Quintana Roo, Tabasco, and Chiapas, and in the Central American countries of Belize, Guatemala, and the western portions of Honduras and El Salvador. Also, on another note, they're a biker gang in Sons of Anarchy, so at least their namesake and heritage is still being used to some degree in modern media, right? Right? 7. Excellent Doctors So, as it turns out, the Mayans had excellent health care and doctors. Considering how ancient their society is, it's surprising how advanced their knowledge of medicine was, even if it is outdated by today's standards. Health and medicine among the ancient Maya was a complex blend of mind, body, religion, ritual, and science. Important to all, medicine was practiced only by a select few who were given an excellent education. These men, called shamans, act as a medium between the physical world and the spirit world. They practice sorcery for the purpose of healing, foresight, and control over natural events. Since medicine was so closely related to religion and even sorcery back when the Mayan civilization was strong, it was essential that Maya shamans had vast and extensive medical knowledge and skill. It's known that the Maya sutured wounds from human hair, reduced fractures, and were even skilled dental surgeons, making prostheses from jade and turquoise and filling teeth with iron pyrite. 6. Painkillers who would have thought in a society that incorporated blood sacrifices into their everyday lifestyle, they also knew their fair share about medicine? The people of the Mayan civilizations would regularly use hallucinogenic drugs that were taken naturally from the earth in their religious rituals. That being said, these drugs and herbs were also used extensively outside of these rituals in day-to-day -day life as painkillers. Flora such as peyote, the morning glory, certain mushrooms, tobacco, and plants used to make alcoholic substances were widely and commonly used by the Mayans. In addition, as depicted in Maya pottery and carvings, ritual enemas were used for a more rapid absorption and effect of the substance. 5. Mayan Childhood Now, this one is a bit messed up, to say the least. The Maya desired some unnatural physical characteristics for their children. Why any parent would want this for their child is beyond us. However, these examples of unique features include the likes of using a pressurized board on the top of a very young child's forehead to create a flattened surface. This process was widespread among the upper class. Another practice was to cross baby's eyes. To do this, objects were dangled in front of a newborn's eyes until the newborn's eyes were completely and permanently crossed. Another interesting fact about Mayan children is that most were named according to the day they were born. Every day of the year had a specific name for both boys and girls, and parents were expected to follow that practice. 4. Ball Courts Nothing like a good game of b-ball, is there? So, as it turns out, Mayans were pretty big on ball games. So much so that they built massive courts in order to play these games. The Mesoamerican ball game was a sport with ritual associations played for about 3,000 years by the pre-Columbian peoples of Mesoamerica. The sport was essentially basketball with the ascending hoops on either side of the court. Crazy to think, huh? The sport had different versions in different places during the millennia, and a modern version of the game, Ulama, is still played in a few places by the local indigenous population. Ball courts were public spaces used for a variety of elite cultural events and ritual activities, like musical performances and festivals, and of course, the ball game. Enclosed on two sides by stepped ramps that led to ceremonial platforms or small temples, the ball court itself was a capital I shape, 
and could be found in all but the smallest of Maya cities. In classic Maya, the ball game was called pits and the action of play was tipitsi. The game was played with a ball roughly the size of a volleyball but made from rubber. But don't try heading this ball if you, for whatever reason, decide to play soccer with it. Decapitation was also associated with this ball game in particular as severed heads are featured in much late classic ball game art. There has even been speculation that the heads and skulls were used as balls. Yes, yeah, suddenly this fact took a dark turn rather quickly. Suddenly ball games don't sound so fun now. 3. Saunas There's nothing better than a good sauna, and saunas were very common in Mayan culture. The sweat bath, or zumpulche, was an important purification element to the ancient Maya. Pretty much similar to what you'd expect from a modern-day sauna, sweat baths were constructed of stone walls and ceilings with a small opening in the top of the ceiling. Water poured onto the hot rocks in the room created steam, offering a setting in which to sweat out impurities. These saunas were used for a variety of reasons as it was a method of either curing or helping with a range of conditions and situations that were taking their toll on the human body. New mothers who had recently conceived a child would seek revitalization in them, while individuals who were sick could find healing power in sweating. Maya kings made a habit out of visiting the sweat baths as well because it left them feeling refreshed and, as they believed, cleaner. 2. Life Goes On we all know about the Mayan calendar. December 21, 2012 marked the end of the world, as it was supposedly the final day on the Mayan calendar, meaning that, well, that was the end. First of all, the Mayans don't have a calendar. They have calendars, which are often interlocked. The calendar that has given rise to the myth of the end of the world is the Mayan long count calendar. According to Mayan mythology, we're living in the fourth world, or creation, so to speak. The previous creation ended on 12 19 19 17 19 of the long count calendar. That sequence occurred again on December 20, 2012. According to the Mayans, this is a time of great celebration for having reached the end of a creation cycle. It wasn't all doom and gloom, as it did not mean the end of the world, but the beginning of a new age. Do we believe that the world is going to end every December 31st? No, we just go on to a new year. Life goes on. This is the same as the Mayan creation periods. In fact, the Mayans make many references to dates that fall beyond 2012. The idea of 2012 being the end of the world was actually first suggested by New Age religionist Jose Aguiles in his 1987 book The Mayan Factor – Path Beyond Technology. 1. Ancient Mystery since its end, nobody knows how the Mayan Empire declined. For reasons that are still debated, the Maya centers of the southern lowlands went into decline during the 8th and 9th centuries and were abandoned shortly thereafter. The decline was coupled with a cessation of monumental inscriptions and large-scale architectural construction. Non-ecological theories of Maya decline are divided into several subcategories, such as overpopulation, foreign invasion, peasant revolt, and the collapse of key trade routes. Ecological hypotheses include environmental disaster, epidemic disease, and climate change. There is evidence that the Maya population exceeded carrying capacity of the environment, including exhaustion of agricultural potential and overhunting of megafauna. Some scholars have recently theorized that an intense 200-year drought led to the collapse of Maya civilization. Thanks for watching another amazing video, folks. Subscribe for more from Elite Facts.